So then, in this pink cast, we're going to explore why we need adjusting entries, what type of adjusting entries we need, and then actually for our third goal, make a few. So, let's get started. Tuck in for a little while. This is going to take a second. I have re repeated our counting cycle to date. So you can take a look at it and remind you. Here's what it is. How it goes. The sooner you learn this, the better. We journalize some transactions during the course of the month. Post them into the general ledger. And come up with an unadjusted trial balance. All of our entries are correct, or hopefully they are, when we make them during this process. But due to the passage of time, some of the balances on the unadjusted child balance are no longer accurate. They're not accurate because we made any mistakes, but we use some supplies. Buildings depreciate. Unearned revenue is learned. A variety of reasons. And so... We need to make adjusting entries to clean up accounts that are on the unadjusted child balance that don't have the correct balance. What causes this is two notions. One is the revenue principle. The other is the matching principle. We apply the revenue principle to recognize revenue. It's also called revenue recognition. And we like to record revenue when it's earned. We don't care when we receive the cash. We like to re revenue be in the period it's earned. And then we like to match the expenses in the period that they were consumed or in the period that they created revenue. So that when these two principles are applied together, we have a cruel basis accounting. Revenue is recorded on the income statement when it's earned. Expenses that were consumed creating that revenue are matched against them. And the result is a cruel basis net income. So if our revenue is hundred thousand dollars you know that that was earned in the current accounting period it may have been received before the current period it might have been received after the current period but what was earned in the current period will show up on the income statement expenses consumed in generating that revenue will be listed I made that up forty thousand and they will be matched against the revenue that's earned so we made $100,000 during the current period. We consumed $40,000 worth of supplies and other material and wages. So our actual net income from efforts for the period was $60,000. When you have used the revenue principle to show what's earned and the matching principle to show what was consumed, you have accrual basis net income. Not what you received and paid, but what you earned and consumed. So that's our goal. In accounting, we defy, divide time into artificial periods. The period might be a month. It might be a quarter, but everybody must do accounting as a minimum for a fiscal year. IRS says so. Let's in our example look at October, November, and December. Let's say that during the month of November you received your hundred thousand dollars we talked about or that you earned the hundred thousand we talked about above as revenue. You might have received some of it in October and put it in an unearned account. Or you might not have received it but have billed it and will receive it in December. But because of the matching principle, we record it in November because it was earned in November. The same with expenses. 
some expenses might have been paid, let's say you bought some supplies in October and you put them in supplies, an asset account, but you consume them in November. And that's how we get the 40000 Alternatively, you might have consumed some and they are sitting in accounts payable and they'll be paid in December. But because we consume them and generating the revenue in November, we want to match them against it. So that, again, net income will be a cruel basis and it will be for the month of November. This idea of paying things in advance and of paying things after the fact are where adjusting entries come from. So we've now looked at why we need adjusting entries. Let's move our discussion into what type of adjusting entries do we need. What type was our second goal? Let's write that down. What type of adjusting entries need to be made? They can be lumped into some broad categories. One is prepaid expenses. From the example above, a prepaid expense would be one where you paid for it in October but consumed it in November. And we need to learn, I forgot my E there, how to do adjusting entries for things that were purchased and put in asset accounts and expense them in the current month. A second category of adjusting entries is for unearned revenue. And this would be for money you received in October but didn't earn till November. People paid in advance. You're not going to say no thank you. You're going to cash a check and say wahoo money in advance. Both of these adjusting entries have something in common and that is cash happened in our example before recognition. Cash happens first and recognition on the income statement, I'm going to abbreviate recognition on the income statement happens at a later time. Both of these are prepaid type of entries. We prepaid some expenses and people prepaid us some revenue. Another type of adjusting entry is just the opposite and they're called accrued expenses and accrued revenue. On accrued expenses, our EVE can't spell and talk. There you go. And accrued revenue, R E V E N U E. What a mess, huh? Accrued expenses are expenses that you consume in November but don't pay until December, but you still consume them, so they need to be matched in November. And accrued revenues are revenues that you have billed as of the end of November but haven't received until December. These two adjusting entries have something in common and that is recognition on the income statement happens first. It happens in November but cash happens later. So we record it before the cash happens. So those are the two types of adjusting entries. We have a goal to make some adjusting entries next. I think I'll do that in the next pencast in an effort to keep this one short. So stay tuned for goal three.